All right, guys, if you caught my last tag video, Super Jacob tagged me in the 10 bags I can't live without. Well, today we're doing part two of the tag, and this is the bags that I see myself with in 10 years. So if you're interested to see what I picked today, stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Caleb and on here you're going to find a lot of things like luxury shopping, reveals, reviews, unboxings, luxury travel, daily vlogs, pretty much anything that has to do with life and style, you're going to find right here on this channel. So before we go any further, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up, say hi down in the comments, I love talking to you guys. Find me over on Instagram, caleb.snell.designer, and what are we talking about today? These are the bags that, as of today, November 2022, I see myself having in 10 years, which would be 2032, and that feels absolutely crazy to say out loud, but I'm sure we'll blink and we'll be there. A lot of the bags you're going to see today, you might have seen in my Sunday video, link down below, the 10 bags that I can't live without. There's going to be some bags from that collection video, and then there's going to be a few new ones and a curveball, so make sure you stick around. To quantify like where I'm going to be stylistically, taste-wise, what houses are gonna be out, and then of course there's gonna be new bags coming out within those 10 years. So it's, it's really hard to say like the bags that I see myself having 10 years from now. A lot of the pieces too in my collection are vintage, you know, from the early 2000s and upwards. The fact that those might be not around for another 10 years, like, these things do degrade, they do fall apart. So it's it's important to kind of keep an open mind. Like obviously this is just for funsies. I have over 80 bags in my collection and I'd like to still have those 80 bags in my collection in 10 years, knock on marble. However, you never know what life's gonna throw at you. So you've gotta, you've gotta roll with the punches, keep it open-minded. 10 bags that I see myself in my collection with in 10 years, let's just kick it off with an easy one. The Hermes Kelly. <laughs> Are you guys tired of hearing me talk about this yet? I mean, hello, it's fabulous. I absolutely love this bag. I initially went in thinking I would want to start my H journey with a Birkin. I have wanted a Birkin since high school. I know, like, like 16 year old boy dreaming of his Birkin one day, but that was me. Don't judge, safe space. So the fact that I landed on a Kelly first kind of surprised me quite honestly. But if you take a look at my collection, the majority of it is just like a single top handle, top handle bag. One top handle, top handle. You know what I'm trying to say, right? Like you collect bags, you get it. So like my Fendi Peekaboos, my Dot Com, my YSL Muse 2s, all like kind of that flap style with one single handle on top. Like it's kind of my vibe, I'm not gonna lie. I initially also thought like the Kelly, it's gonna be a pain to get in and out of when you're standing, especially like at a cast register or walking about and you want some chapstick. It's really not that bad. Like it's a really easy bag to use. And I also kind of like the idea of the shoulder strap, even though I can't really pull it off, but like it helps hold it or like hang it on a chair if you need to at like a bistro. Overall, I absolutely love the bag and I do see more H in my future, which we'll get into here by the end of the video. So make sure you don't miss that. <laughs> so the next bag that I see myself having in 10 years in my current collection, which again, this is subject to change, asterisk, is none other than my Coach Soft Tabby. I rant and rave about this bag all the freaking time. It's one of my favorites to use. It's so fun. It's so comfortable. It's, 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 it's familiar. Like if, if you've had one coach bag, you, you've, had, you've had them all basically. And this bag is just so easy to use, so fun. You know what you're gonna get with a coach bag. And this is no exception. I've been collecting coach since 2006. So I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just like a new collector. Like I actually know coach pretty well. I worked there too in college. This just marks all, all the, checks all the boxes for a coach bag. It is fabulous, it is fun. I think people give fabric bags a bad rap. They, they take a lot more than, than you think they can. They, they can handle it, trust me. And this being denim just makes it a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more hardy in my opinion. But um, once it starts to wear out, kind of like, you know, when like the, the knee in your jeans starts to wear out, I think it might look kind of cool worn out. So I can't wait to see what this bag looks like in 2032. As a collector, like hello, I have over 80 bags in my collection. A lot of my collection too is because I went to archive some of the more important it bags in the last 20 years. The next one is no exception. This bag, I never thought I would have one, let alone like actually carry it out. It is none other than my Multicolor Speedy 30 in the Noir. I love this bag. This is Louis Vuitton Perfection encapsulated in one handbag. It is right here. The Speedy is an iconic bag. It comes to us from the 20s. It is an iconic shape. The coated canvas is very hardy. And I love that that under, you know, Marc Jacobs' reign, Takashi Murakami, you know, not only designed these beautiful colors and kind of reinvigorated the monogram canvas, but we also have these hallmarks of 
the trunk era that Louis Vuitton was synonymous for. You get a lot of LV goodness all in one handbag. This bag would never leave my collection ever. I definitely intend to add more multicolor through 2023. Make sure that you come back in December because I'm going to be reviewing my 2022 purchases and then doing my 2023 wish list. So I'm super excited to share that with you guys. I've got some good ones. Sticking with LV, another important bag in my collection that is going nowhere would be none other than my LV Palace Beauty Bag. Yes, technically it's a beauty bag. It falls under travel, cosmetics bags, whatever. I use this as a clutch though, every day. So it is the perfect size for all of your essentials. It is the perfect size to carry. And even better yet, when you're out at lunch, it can sit there on the table by itself next to you on the chair. It is a phenomenal bag. I actually picked this up in Germany. We went to Germany for Christmas for a couple of weeks back in 2019, right before the pandemic. It was like our last big haul, hooray. Like if I had known then what was gonna happen, maybe we would have stayed longer, but I'm happy we went. It was a beautiful Christmas. I mean, Germany at Christmas time is, it's a vibe, it's a whole thing. If, if you have the chance, go, because the Christmas markets are phenomenal. Anyway, I ran through Munich a couple days before Christmas to get this bag. It was one of the last ones in Germany. After I hemmed and hawed and the, the one in the showroom sold out at the flagship store, luckily they found one 10 blocks away and we had to run through all the Christmas crowds to get it, and I did. Never leaving my collection, sentimental, it's discontinued, and when not cared for properly, these palace bags can look terrible pretty quick. So I'm gonna keep good watch on this one. So next up in my collection is my only full exotic bag, and that would be none other than my Frida G. Nini era Gucci Lady Lock briefcase clutch. I think that's what it's called. I still don't know. Head over heels for this bag. I think I bought this to congratulate myself for my promotion about a year and a half ago when we moved here to Chicagoland. I carried this to dinner once. As with many of my bags, I carried it once. I tried it on in store. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I did carry this out to dinner once and it was absolutely phenomenal. It does turn heads. It is a fabulous bag and I think that, you know, I'm gonna definitely add more from this line to my collection. There's a really cool bamboo top handle. It's the large, I think it's the large lady lock top handle. I mean, yeah, phenomenal name. It has the bamboo detail, the same lock design on the front. Every bag from this collection is absolutely stunning. The clutches, the top handles, the totes, like this this collection was phenomenal. Frida really knew what she was doing. I definitely wanna add more in my collection from this line. But like I was saying, this is my first exotic. Again, it was a sentimental piece. I bought it for my promotion, so it's never going anywhere. This means a lot to me. Now, the last bag in this lineup that you saw in the last video, yes, we're gonna get into some new eye candy, so stay tuned. But the last bag in this lineup is none other than my peekaboo, my large Fendi Solaria peekaboo. Now this one is of course the beaded interior. I, I know I flash it every time it's on camera, I'm sorry, but maybe someone new wants to see it too. It kind of surprised me, I didn't know it existed. So when it showed up on Fashion File, one morning I think I had it in my cart and purchased by lunch. I just told Zane like this is happening. Normally when it comes to like larger purchases, like north of like $500, we talk to each other about it like, hey, what do you think of this purchase? Like this was one of those items where I'm just like, okay, veto card, I'm buying it. And he was okay with it, right? Sure. Sure. He was fine with it. Don't let him trick you. I love the peekaboo line in general. I, I need more in my collection. Four is not enough. All right, so the last bag in my collection, and this one didn't show up in my last video. This is kind of a curveball. So the 10 bags that I can't live without were the bags that like I carry a lot, I want to carry a lot, always on my mind. This one didn't make the cut for that. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I just don't carry it a lot because it's not necessarily work appropriate. We love a good PC King, right? So this bag is, you've already guessed it, like you've seen it before, but it is my Coach Cashin Eagle NYC tote. So from my understanding, there was like something less of like 500 of these made. They were on the runway. They weren't supposed to make it into production. Um, when they were interviewed for this bag by, I think it was like The Advocate or what one of the gay online magazine publications, they flat out said, no, that bag will not make it to production. So I lost all hope. This was from runway 2022, I think for spring, summer. Lost all hope, they were like, oh, you know, it's not gonna be made, we're not gonna put it in production. So like, that's that. I'm not gonna get my amazing Eagle NYC tote. Well then, as luck would have it, it did make it into production and I didn't know about it. And I saw it on the website too late, it was already sold out. So I had to track this down. I called my flagship here in town first. I said, hey, Chicago, help me, help a boy out. Do you have the cute big gay tote? And they're like, oh, you know, bestie, we love that bag, but no, they didn't give it to us. But you can try Soho, was it Chelsea in Manhattan? I'm like, okay, done and done. Immediately, 
furiously calling them. I think I was on my lunch break and I was like, you know, calling each one. Like I had my credit card out ready to go just in case. First door's like, oh, we have it, but it's on hold for somebody. I'm like, okay, fine. Like I've worked in the industry. I know the game. I'm like, take my name just in case. Call the second store. Like he laughed at me, like mm, it wasn't happening. Fine. And then I think I called Soho. They're like, we might. Someone has their name reserved for one. We don't have it here yet, but we might. It might happen. Okay, that felt promising, so I left my name and number, and not even five minutes later, apparently this person magically revoked their name from the wish list of the hottest and hardest to find coach handbag in history, and it's mine. Thank you, whoever you were, for canceling your order. I was so happy. I was frantically, like I said, frantically calling. I even looked on eBay. Like, I'm not above paying retail for something that's rare and fabulous. However, this bag was already going for two grand on eBay, and it's like 400, 500 full price from Coach. I'm like, ugh, it's Coach bag. I'm like, I love you, Coach, but I can't pay two grand for one. I'm sorry, I draw the line somewhere. I know, I have limits. Isn't that funny? Um, the more you know. This bag is absolutely fabulous. I don't get to carry it often. Like I said, I work in a professional setting in an office, and I just don't think carrying a big hunky man with a towel through the office is like, you know, good Monday morning coffee chat. Like, I just not the attention I want. This is reserved for weekends or special shopping trips or vacations. A few times I have carried it. I absolutely love it. Again, I'm so glad that I put the work in to track this bag down. And the fact that I'm like holding it, like you guys don't understand like how frantic I was when I found out that I might have missed out on this bag that they weren't going to make in the first place. This will never leave my collection. Those were the seven bags in my collection that I see myself with having in 10 years. Years. Let's talk about the last three. They're not here. Wishful thinking, right? The three bags in my collection that I want to add for the next 10 years would include none other than McKelly's Lonely, so it needs some brothers. I would like to add a Birkin 35 or a Birkin 40. I'm open. I like the big sloppy look. To that end, I would also add a Lindy 26. The real Shaquine Jasleen has the, the Lindy 26, and I've watched her unboxing review a couple of times. It's a phenomenal bag. I would love, love, love to add one to my collection. So I have quite a few on Fashion File on my watch list. Maybe I'll try my luck and pop into the Chicago boutique and see if they'll sell me one. I mean, who am I? I'm a nobody to them, but... We can try. And then the third and, well, the 10th and final bag on this list is another bag that I've always wanted. Every time I see it, every single year, I'm like, this is the year I will buy that bag. No, it is not Chanel. It's not Hermes. It's a Dior. I do not have a Dior in my collection yet, which is kind of, I mean, that that's a shame. For having a big bag collection, being into this stuff, the stuff, and not having a Dior bag. I mean, I'm sure it's not uncommon, but I feel like I should have a Dior bag and check that off my list. So I would love to add a small lady Dior. I think they're gorgeous. I think they're perfect. Maybe a medium. Maybe I'll go up to a medium. I like the crossbody aspect. And I mean, hello, if it was good enough for Princess Diana, I guess Caleb Snell can have one too, right? <laughs> Wishful thinking maybe, but that is on my list. That one I will definitely buy pre-owned. Just from watching all of the Lady Dior videos, everyone's always like, I wish I bought mine pre-owned. They don't hold their value. It's not worth, you know, going in, paying full retail. I hear you. I feel the same way about peekaboos. So I usually buy my peekaboos, you know, pre-owned as well. So I'm going to do the same with the Lady Dior. Is she going to join my collection in 2023? Probably. I'd also like to add a Dior Ever. Okay, don't get me started because I'll, I'll list all 3,000 bags that I want to add to my collection. Those were the 10 bags that I see myself carrying in 10 years, 2032. As of right now, as a snapshot in time, those are the 10 bags I see myself with. Who knows? But it's going to be exciting to see, you know, where I'm at in 10 years, you know, both, you know, personally, professionally. I just think it's so fun. Sometimes I walk into my closet and this... Let me know if you do the same thing too down in the comments, but sometimes I walk into the closet and as someone who's always loved bags and wanted to collect bags, you know, I thought I was big fancy when I bought my first, you know, Speedy 40, you know, brand new back in 07, 08, I think it was 08, 07. Just like how over the moon I was for that one purchase. To see, you know, to have, you know, that Caleb from 2007 pop into 2022 and see the collection I have now, I mean, he never would have thought like some of these would have been possible. So it's it's going to be really neat to see where I'm at in 10 years. I think I think it'll be fun. So if I'm still here on YouTube, if YouTube's still a thing, I mean, I'm not going anywhere. But if it's still a thing, I think it'll be fun to pull this video up in 2032 and be like, oh, I remember that. Yeah. All right. So now is the time to tag a few people on this video. And I'm going to switch it up. So in my last video, I tagged a few of my friends here. Melissa Adams Wade, Jamie from Lux Petite. Quirky from Classics with a Quirk. So go and check them out. They'll be linked down below again. I love all of them and their channels. Again, if you guys have already done this tag, I'm so sorry, but a tag's a tag. So we've got to tag someone, right? I would like to hear Yoda Styles take on this tag. I, I love Yoda's channel. I think she's so much fun to watch. And 
She always has something, you know, she, she has a really neat perspective. So I'd like to hear from her. I would also like to hear from Winnie BLV. We recently did kind of like a little impromptu panel with Zara Justine. Oh, I think they've both already been tagged on this. Zara Justine and Winnie B. I'm gonna tag them anyway. Links will be down below. Um, we recently did a panel with Jacob, an impromptu um, content creator panel. So I'll link that down below as well. And let's throw Autumn Beckman into the list. I think that would be a lot of fun to hear her take. If she hasn't done it yet already, if she has the time, I would love to kind of see, you know, she also has a really large collection. And I would just kind of like to see, you know, what her tastes might look like in 10 years. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me today. I love bags and this is easy to talk about. Um, when I when Jacob first tagged me in it, like I was super excited, but I was like, oh, I don't know what bags I want in 10 years. But once you get thinking about it, like it's just, it snowballs. Like you're like, oh, makes sense. Like these are the bags I want in 10 years. Make sure to join me this Sunday after Thanksgiving, 10 a.m. Central time for a very, very special Louis Vuitton Suhali unboxing. This is a Holy grail dream bag for me. Again, much like the Kelly, much like the Multicolor, the Peekaboo. This is a bag I have wanted for a very long time and it is sitting over there in my library on my table, just looking perfect. And I cannot wait to share it with you guys. It does have a bit of a roller coaster of a story. There were some highs, some lows, and for a minute it wasn't looking pretty. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. Happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. And if you're gonna go out and brave the crowds, be safe on Black Friday. Tell me what deals you guys are hunting for and what you get. I want to know. I'm curious. I'm trying to lay low this year. I mean, hello. We're still catching our breath after the Kelly. Anyway, guys, thanks again for joining me today. Have fun, and I will see you guys on Sunday. Nope, I'll see you on Friday for a vlog, but formally one-on-one -on, -one on Sunday. All right, until then, guys, have fun. Bye-bye.